we come back to talk about counting. All right, so last time we uh, said that uh, we proved that uh, if we have a set with n elements, uh, it has uh, two to the n subsets. Okay, so um, now today let's uh, not just try to count them, let's try to enumerate them. What I mean by enumerate is that we want to list the subsets of the set. Okay, so as an ex example, let's consider this set. So it has uh, three elements. So it has uh, two to the th three subsets. Okay. Now let's uh, when we write subset, uh, this subset A B is the same subset as B A, right? So let's uh, try to be uh, uh, try to uh, order the elements in the subset by 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 uh, alphabetically. So we would write A B. Okay. Right. So there are many ways to list uh, these eight subsets. Um, one is that is this. Uh, can you see how we order the subsets? So we list the subset by just looking at the empty set first, and then we look at uh, A, then A B, A B C. Okay. So if you look at that, so it's like uh, we have this uh, the word empty word. Okay, and then A, and then we have uh, A, B, and then we have A, B, C, and then we have A, C. So this is basically the dictionary order. Okay, so this is how we order the subset as a dictionary ordering. We may have other other ways of uh, list uh, ordering or listing these eight subsets. Another way is to look at uh, maybe this one. Okay, so. Uh, in this case, if you look at it, uh, we start with empty subsets, or empty set, and then uh, we t list uh, se subset with uh, one element, and then subsets with two elements, and then the finally uh, the last one will be the subset with three elements. So this is another way of listing uh, subsets. Okay, there there may be others, but um, today um, we look at uh, a particular um, another representation of subset uh, and it's going to be useful when we list subset okay so to represent subset of this set ABC um, we will look at it uh, each element of uh, the, the set a one by one and we look at if uh, we, we see if that element belongs to the subset if it belongs to the subset we write down one if it doesn't we write down zero Okay, so if we have A C, uh, we look at A first, right? So A is in the subset, so we write one. B is not, so we write zero. C is in, so we write one. So this is what we would represent uh, a subset A C. Okay. Now what's about A? Okay. We can do the same thing, right? Look at A. A is in the subset, so, so we write one. Uh, B is not, we write zero. C is not. Uh, we write zero, so it's going to be one zero zero. Okay, you can do the same. B C B C is going to be uh, A is not B is in C is in, so zero one one, and the last one is empty set. Uh, nothing's here, so as you get zero 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 zero. Okay, so that's how you represent uh, these uh, subsets. Uh, know that it's a way to represent subsets of a particular set. Okay, and we need to fix the ordering of the elements of A. Otherwise, when we see uh, 0, 1, 1, we wouldn't know what exactly the first uh, element. So we need to say uh, the first element is A, the second one is B. Okay. If we fix the ordering of the elements in A, um, we can uh, represent each subset uh, f with this procedure. Okay. Now, uh, if you look at the representation, we only have 0, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 1, 0, if you have three elements. Then uh, you may recall that these are binary numbers. Okay, we can look at these string. It can be looked at as, as strings or as binary numbers. So uh, these binary numbers, has, if you look at it as, as binary numbers, so let's say it's base 2, right? We can interpret it as uh, a number. So this 0, 1, 1, 0, so is, so can you figure this out? 
so basically the um, the the last digit is uh, one right this is two this is four so this is four plus two that's a six or zero zero one this is in decimal it's just one right so we can associate the uh, this uh, representation with the numerical values of the, the representation as if we think of it as binary numbers so um, this AC is zero one zero one zero one and that's uh, what's the value of that so it's five and A is uh, zero uh, one zero zero that's uh, four and zero one one that's three and and zero 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 is zero okay now uh, it can be this representation can be uh, considered backwards in a, in a way uh, in we look at the inverse so if we say um, if you look at integer six you write it as this and then it turns out to be the subset a a a b okay so let's look at another thing uh, let's say um, maybe a four four is what is that zero one one zero zero so that you get a and uh, uh, what else seven let's say seven seven is one 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 base two so you get subset a b and c okay so if you look at the number you get a subset when you look at the subset you get a number okay now uh, with this uh, associations uh, in mathematically sometimes we refer to this as uh, um, uh, correspondence so with this correspondence we can write down the set like this so we list the numbers and when we list uh, when we start with numbers we have natural order ordering of, of integers this way so we start with 0 1 2 3 up to 7 and then you tran we translate it to binary numbers uh, we put 0 on top uh, in, in front now we, we, we get a, a subset okay so uh, this is the full correspond uh, the list of uh, correspondence so, so one correspond to c uh, and four correspond to a something like that okay all right so now uh, can you s not do you notice anything interesting regarding this uh, correspondence all right um Okay, you may notice that uh, um, one integer okay correspond to one set, right? Different integers go to different subset. Okay, you, you don't have like two goes to some subset, and then uh, three goes to the same subset. No, that's that's not true in this case. Now, so uh, this subset, okay, each subset uh, correspond to one one number. Okay, and furthermore. Um, every subset, you know, is listed on the the right hand side. Okay, so every subset corresponds to some number. Okay, so that's that's one thing that uh, you can notice about this. So uh, that's uh, when we consider a set with three elements. Okay, so let so now let's look at the uh, uh, general case when we have subset A. Uh, we ha when we have set A with n elements. Okay. We can consider each element of A. Uh, we can uh, represent a, a subset of set A with n elements as well. So um, suppose A now say A is uh, A B C D E, say five elements. If you look at uh, this subset B D E, we can write down in the same way, right? We as previously so we look at a is a in the set subset no it doesn't so we put zero is b in yes we put one is c in no we put zero is d in yes is e in so this is the uh, binary representation of this subset uh, with respect to this set okay and this ordering okay so we can do the same thing and um, I, I, we're not going to prove it but uh, we can uh, we can prove it but let's skip it for now so each subset is represented uniquely as a string of 0 and 1 the fact that it's represented uniquely because if you have two different subset uh, if there are some different uh, elements that belong to one subset and not the other the string will be different okay and also if you look at each string of length n 
okay, of length n. Each string correspond to only one subset because different string we have uh, different uh, when you translate it back to subsets you have different uh, subsets. So le let's look at it. for example we have one 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 zero one zero another string is say zero one zero one zero. So suppose it's different in the first place. So if you translate this back to a subset, so you have a and something right. But this one won't have a, right? Because in the position of a, it's it's got zero, so it goes to different subset, uh, right? So um, now because each subset can be represented as a string, and uniquely, right? So one subset, one string, and also each string correspond to only one subset. So then we can conclude that because um, we have this kind of uh, uh, correspondence. So uh, now, now we have a set, set and string, and one set goes to one string exactly, and each string goes to one set. Okay, so we have uh, this correspondence, so we can conclude that the number of subsets equals number of bit string of length n. We'll look at this further. Okay, so now, um, so how many strings of length n are there? Okay. So because uh, it's it's binary, so um, and it's of length n. Each each digit has two choices. We, so we can count it. So the so we know that finally we know that there are two n two to the n bit strings of length n. Now because we know that the number of subset equals the number of bit strings, so we can conclude that the number of set is also two to the n. Okay, for a set with n elements, right? Okay, so this is another proof of the following theorem. So this is a theorem that we proved last time in lecture. All right. You may ask, uh, why do we need two proofs of the same statement? Okay. Um, yeah, having two proofs doesn't mean the statement is stronger or truer or more correct because the correct statement is correct. Right. You 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 cannot uh, make something wrong by having two wrong sta statements. Right. But usually, each proof usually reveals additional facts. Okay, if you look at back, if you look back the, at the proof, the first proof, uh, when we introduce the first proof, we consider the uh, procedure for constructing subset. Okay, and th that shows how to construct subset. The second proof introduces uh, a nice technique uh, for counting. Uh, yeah. So instead of counting subsets directly, we show that. Uh, we have a special correspondence between subset and binary numbers, and then we just count the numbers. And and this procedure is uh, will be really nice, and we'll use it many times in the future. Okay, so let's look at this uh, special correspondence a little bit more. Okay, so what's so special about this correspondence? Okay, if you recall, so we have these two set, right? So this is number numbers and this is subset so um, we, we want to this this correspondence allows us to say that they have the same number of these two sets have the same number of elements okay so in order to say that uh, we need uh, these two facts so like for each number there's one set that correspond to it and for each subset there's only one number that it correspond to uh, given these two properties, uh, we can conclude that both sets have the same cardinality. Okay, uh, this type of correspondence, we will look at it further in the future. It's, it's called one-to-one -one correspondence, or in short, a bijection. So, if you can establish a bijection between two sets, then you can conclude that they have the same cardinality. Okay, so um, that's that's it for the first part of this uh, lecture. Um, we'll see you in the next part.